If hell were a place on earth, this is what it might look like. The flames destroyed what two world wars did not, ravaging over 800 years of history. As the spire of Notre Dame fell to the inferno, people in France and around the world looked on. Thousands gathered nearby in Paris, many in shock at the scale of the blaze. French President Emmanuel Macron came to stand by them. This cathedral, we were able to build it more than 800 years ago, and over the centuries to make it grow and improve. So I say to you very solemnly this evening, this cathedral, we will rebuild it all together. And this is probably a part of French destiny, a project we will have for the coming years. But I am committed to it. Starting tomorrow, a national fundraising campaign will be launched. Some 400 firefighters battled to save the church's main bell towers. They also rushed into the flames to try to salvage religious relics and priceless artworks. The fire spread extremely quickly on the roof. Wooden beams dating from the 12th century are thought to be to blame. Later, some measure of good news. Firefighters announced the church's core structure had been saved. Their efforts honored by those who looked on at the unfolding disaster. It's not just Catholics, but also believers and non-believers. We share the same attachment to Notre Dame de Paris, because it's a landmark, it's a place of refuge in French history, Notre Dame de Paris. It's where we have gathered in joy and sorrow throughout our history. It's the end of an era, the end of a piece of history and architecture. It's incredibly unfortunate. This is something that will have the world mourning. The loss of this piece of world heritage is weighing on many, well beyond the streets of Paris. And let's go right to DW's Barbara Vazel. She is at the scene in Paris. Barbara, good morning to you. We can see the, the main structure of the cathedral is still standing, as we said, there behind you. Uh, bring us up to date on the latest efforts to fully extinguish the flames. Yeah, around 4 o'clock this morning, the head of the firefighting services in Paris said uh, the worst is over. Uh, we have managed to contain the fire, to extinguish the, uh, the worst uh, fires that were sort of raging in the middle of what we see behind us here, where the scaffolding is. Th this is where the spire was that sort of broke down last night uh, as the first piece of the cathedral. And all around it is the vast old roof in two tiers of the cathedral dating back really to the 13th century roof beams like seven, eight hundred years old were in there. And this is really what burned down relentlessly. So during the night we could see till one o'clock or so we could see flames really reaching up to the sky bright red and then slowly slowly it became darker when the firefighters managed to beat back the fire now the problem is they're still throwing water at the walls of the cathedral there in order to cool it down because with such a huge fire in an old building like this uh, the problem is that there might be nests somewhere that start reigniting even uh, after hours even after days it's still possible so we can also see the tiny uh, men sort of crawling around in the in the to support work of the cathedral firefighters and, and structural engineers trying to assess what will stand up and what is still in immediate danger. Yeah, Barbara, as you've been speaking, we've been looking in, um, at live pictures of, of that scaffolding you were mentioning and the outside structure of the cathedral. What more are authorities learning this morning about the extent of the damage? 
The damage, of course, is extensive. The cathedral is built from sandstone, like all the historic buildings in, in Paris. And uh, the, the enormous heat, of course, damages the stone. It sort of bakes the stone and it makes it friable. So nobody knows yet really what the, what the structural problems that will be arising could be. The inside, of course, is heavily damaged. And as uh, one knows from when, when a building, you know, an apartment building burns, the, the water can make worse damage than the fire itself originally. So huge amounts of water have been pouring into the historic inside of this church. So a lot of the art in there, uh, paintings and, and sculptures and uh, the other works that have been collected there throughout the centuries are lost. What is lost uh, is a large part of the historic glass. Everybody who knows Notre Dame knows that there those huge uh, rose windows, the big round windows at the entrance side, beautiful old glass dating back to the 13th century. That is lost because it just simply cracked in the enormous heat of this fire. Uh, so there is extensive damage. Some things could be brought out during the night, but uh, this will be a horrible task and a tremendous task over years and years to come to rebuild this, and much will be lost and not be retrievable. It is indeed such a, a tragedy, Barbara. What do we know at this time about the cause of this fire? The cause of the fire is supposedly negligence. It's an accident, as horrible as that sounds. There were works going on, as we see from the scaffolding there. Uh, there were working um, craftsmen were working in, in this roof, in this ancient roof, around this spire. And obviously something happened there. Maybe an electrical fault, maybe through some, maybe through some welding works or other things. You know, just some sparks sort of struck these old, old beams. And they are, of course, as dry as tinder. And they slowly took fire. I mean, to, to, for oak beams to burn, it takes a while. But then the, the workmen started, uh, they stopped work at uh, 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon. And the fire started around 7 o'clock. So it took, for, it took two hours for it to take hold. Uh, and so the, the, the prosecutor of Paris uh, has opened an investigation, uh, but they think uh, it was negligence and it was, after all, an accident. And it will be maybe not ever possible to, to exactly figure out what caused it. You know, Barbara, we've seen such an outpouring of grief, especially from Parisians, and it's safe to say Notre Dame really is a, is a part of the city's soul. Uh, tell us more what, about what people there have been saying to you. People are just sad. I mean, last night people were standing on the bridges to the Ile Saint-Louis where you have a view, all the, the rest of the, the perimeter of the cathedral was blocked off by police, of course, where, because firefighters were going back and forth and just for security reasons. But people were standing on the bridges and watching the spectacle, but not in the way that they were sort of like gawping at it, uh, sensational, but it was very quiet. Hardly anybody spoke. Some people were singing religious hymns and it was, uh, you know, some people were sort of making the Catholic uh, cross sign and, and it was very, everybody, even people who said they're not close to the church, said that this strikes at our hearts because this is a symbol for Paris and a symbol for the French nation going back and uh, the stability and the longevity of the French nation going back to medieval ages. This is really the old heart of Paris. So people were very touched and there is a general sense of great sadness. Barbara, we've also seen some reactions um, from, from church leaders and political leaders. Uh, let's listen now to some of those responses. I can say this. When it's a monument you love and a monument you live in, which you celebrate, which represents so much in our history, it's really sad. And I'm asking God why. We have gotten calls from all over the world because it's a tragedy for the whole world. I've said it before, but of course, Notre Dame is the entire history of Paris. Notre Dame is really the symbol here of who we are. It's a part of our culture. It's a part of our lives. That's a, a truly great cathedral. And I've been there and I've seen it and there's no cathedral. I think I could say there's probably no cathedral in the world like it. It's a, tar it's a terrible scene. 
All right, those are some of the reactions there uh, from uh, political and uh, church leaders. And uh, let's uh, talk more about this with uh, DW News editor and uh, French journalist Emmanuel Chaz, who joins us here in our studio. Good morning to you as well. You know, we heard some reaction there from the mayor of Paris. Tell us more about what was so special about the, the structure of Notre Dame itself, uh, the, the, the wood um, frame and also the spire. Well, the wood uh, structure of Notre Dame uh, was actually the original uh, structure, so that means uh, it was 850 years old. Uh, and it survived uh, the French Revolution, it survived uh, various hazards, it uh, survived World War I, World War II, and that was what was so particular and so miraculous about Notre Dame, is that it was a building that, has, uh, that had managed to remain intact throughout the centuries and that had managed to remain untouched uh, through uh, so many uh, historical events and that made it very special. Also, it lies at the very heart of Paris and the first Parisians were actually buried in the crypt of Notre Dame. So it made it a very special place for Parisians and for French people in general. What makes it still such a symbol of uh, French heritage and, and history, as you were saying, and also what does it mean for Europe? Well, uh, Actually, what makes it so special is that uh, no matter whether you, you're a believer or not, no matter what's your uh, faith, it is a place uh, where uh, French people identify with French culture. It is our civilization. And it's also, of course, it's a Christian civilization, but um, any French person identifies with the capital city and with uh, its monuments, such as uh, the, the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, and of course, uh, Notre Dame. And Angela Merkel, uh, the German chancellor, said, yesterday that it was a symbol of, uh, of uh, European culture that was uh, disappearing uh, in the flames and that's exactly uh, how it is felt. It, f it feels like it's much bigger than only a French uh, cultural heritage building. Yeah, that's a, a sentiment we've seen over and over again on Twitter. It's a, co a collective symbol of, of our civilization, of our heritage. We just were seeing some live pictures there again this morning. Uh, let's bring uh, Barbara Vazel, who's in Paris, back into the discussion. Uh, Barbara, you know, plans are now now, as we heard from the French president Emmanuel Macron, to rebuild Notre Dame. Is there any sense at this point how long or how expensive that undertaking could be? It will take very, very long, many, many years, because this is very difficult and detailed work. You're going to need all the artisans that France still have and even has and even draft some from, uh, in, from other countries because the whole roof structure, which is huge, this is 60 meters high and it is more than 100 meters long, will have to be rebuilt and the whole interior renovated and then the structural damage uh, that has been done to what we can still see standing up there hasn't, yet, hasn't been assessed yet. That is going to take days and weeks. So this is not a question of money. And the first the big donation has come in by Arnaud Pinot, one of the French entrepreneurs and billionaires who started out with 100 million uh, last night and uh, public fundraising has been put up. The tragedy here really is that the French state has neglected Notre Dame as many other uh, sort of parts of it, the cultural, the French cultural heritage for years. It was just a bit patching here, a bit patching there, a few millions here and there. So it was really always underfunded. It was re never really thoroughly renovated in the sense that it would, would be made save for the future. And so now this really seems like some awful revenge for decades long neglect on the side of French governments. This is not Emmanuel Macron's fault. This is governments before him that have really not sort of put up the money for this. And now he will have to find hundreds of millions, maybe more than a billion to rebuild this precious building. And in the end, it will never be what it was because you cannot bring back the special sense of the age of this of this place, of the building, and the, the special sentiment it used to carry. Emmanuel, I want to ask you about that sentiment. We just heard from Barbara there, the this, this sense that Notre Dame and many cultural uh, heritage symbols in France have been neglected by the French government. There was a headline from two years ago, I remember seeing an international press saying, Notre Dame is crumbling, who will pay for it? Tell us about the repairs that had been going on and whether enough had been done to preserve this very important icon. Well, uh, first, I think we should go back in time a little bit uh, because Fran France is a secular state uh, where uh, 
so, so there's no uh, state religion and religious buildings uh, are owned uh, by the state or local authorities only if they were nationalized uh, prior to the French uh, Revolution. Uh, and uh, that means that uh, we have in France 44,000 uh, cultural heritage monuments and the state has to take care of half of it. This represents billions of euros, which uh, the, the state alone cannot uh, take care of so that so the renovation uh, restoration works would also depend on uh, private funds and that's one of the problems now uh, when it comes to Notre Dame it is such a landmark in Paris so of course the authorities had uh, in, uh, uh, invested millions of euros in uh, in a re uh, renovation work started in July 2018 and this uh, renovation uh, worked work should have lasted 20 years and would have cost in millions of euros but now due to that uh, neglect uh, due to that state of ne uh, negligence and also due uh, to that fire it will cost much more and for who knows how many years and just like uh, Barbara was saying we will never recover the rose windows there are also uh, paintings invaluable paintings invaluable sculptures that have been uh, damaged not only by the flames but also by the water uh, thrown by the firefighters so it's a whole it's a huge loss for uh, cultural heritage not only French cultural heritage but worldwide cultural heritage. And that heritage. might indeed be the price to pay for, as you were both saying, uh, you and Barbara, uh, neglect over years uh, by the government, but also from yeah. pri private funds. Barbara, coming back to you now, you know, officials, including President Macron, have been thanking the firefighters who were on the scene all night last night um, for their courage. Is there any assessment at this point of how authorities responded to this fire? Yeah, there seems to be a big problem there because last night we heard that it uh, took uh, too long, much too long, maybe up to 45 minutes to, uh, for a larger number of firefighters to appear at the scene because the fire broke out shortly before 7 o'clock. And we talked to some inhabitants here who are working along the Ile, the Isle of St. Islands, and uh, one man told us that he said, I, I saw the shine of the fire around the spire quite early on, and then there was just a single fire engine arriving there. And now, this is a huge building they normally can't reach, so cranes had to be brought in and for, for water to be thrown at the cathedral. There was a, a firefighting boat on the Thames, on the river below us here, that was just throwing huge wads of water, but that was like much later. Uh, forces couldn't be mobilized quickly enough to really contain the fire in, in its beginning stages. And that was why the spire collapsed so early, and this is why the whole roof really burned like, like, like a huge like flaming, it's reaching up to the sky red till, till, yeah, maybe like until midnight more or less. So for around five hours. So the questions will be put to the mayor of Paris, Anne Hidalgo, whether there was an emergency plan, whether it could not be enacted, what happened, why was the response too slow, why did it take for too long to get enough firefighters on the scene. So this morning we still, we see some of them sort of crawling around carefully on the outer supports of the buildings here, building here behind us, trying to assess uh, what the damage is uh, structurally. Um, and they still need to sort of keep up throwing water at the building because it can take days for it to be really quiet and the danger to be over. Emmanuel, you, you have been looking into that as well, the, the questions being raised about the response time. Um, tell us what you've seen. Well, uh, we got a little bit more clarity this morning as to uh, some figures, for example. We know now that there were several hundreds of firefighters on site, around 400 of them were there. A hundred of them were actually devoted to, to uh, uh, salvaging uh, artwork. They, they came into the cathedral and they uh, managed uh, to, to save a couple uh, of, well, most of the treasure, treasure chest, for example, uh, that was saved. Uh, they, we also found out that uh, they barely had time to retreat before the spire collapsed. So we avoided, we nearly avoided uh, a tragedy, another tragedy, a human tragedy. Um, also, uh, perhaps on my uh, personal feeling, uh, when it happened, it, those images of the spire collapsing, uh, for some weird reason, I couldn't explain to myself why it reminded me of 9-11, because I thought 9-11 was a human tragedy, and here we have a cultural tragedy. But in the one case, uh, in New York, it was thousands of people 
disappearing and dying tragically. And here it's a thousand years of history, which is also disappearing. And uh, yeah, that w I, w I was really shocked of uh, when, when this all happened yesterday and when the event unfolded, really. Yeah. A lot of people talking about that uh, that moment in particular when the spire collapsed. Well, I, I want to thank you both, our correspondents covering the story for us this morning. Emmanuel Chase here with us here in the studio and uh, Barbara Vesel in Paris. We'll be coming back to you a little bit later.